Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Free speech is under fire on American college campuses. If you are a Christian and you dare to talk against homosexuality, there will be protesters to shut you down. Dr. Michael Brown is next. Former Navy chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we normally like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a celebrity guest who has been away from our show for too long, but a dear friend for many years, Dr. Michael Brown, who hosts a national radio show on the American Family Radio Network and is the author of many, many, many books. Dr. Michael Brown, welcome to the program. Hey, great to be with you, thank you so much. So Dr. Brown, you are skinny compared to the last time we had you on our program. And I wanna tease uh, the audience, we're gonna talk about your book, Breaking the Stronghold of Food, How We Conquered Food Addictions and Discovered a New Way of Living. You have personally lost weight and you look wonderful. Yeah, I feel like a whole new man. I went from 275 pounds to 180 pounds in less than eight months. That was over three years ago, not by dieting, but by changing what I ate and my relationship to food. So I turned 63 next month and I'm thriving, uh, more full of energy, life, vitality than I can remember in many, many years. So yeah, we'll, we'll get into the book. Nancy and I, my wife, Nancy and I tell our story, inspire, encourage, but yeah, the real deal lived out now the proof of, of several years into this now. Well, I'm so proud of you for taking a stand. But first, the news. You are a world-renowned, I think, uh, activist and Christian commentator on the current events of the day. You have been invited to speak at a college in North Carolina, and yet they're about to shut you down because homosexual activists do not want Christians speaking the word of God on public universities. Talk about this. Yeah, it's it's really remarkable. A campus group reached out to me about doing an event, and I said, of course, I'll gladly do it. It's going to be challenging for you to make it happen, but we'll do it. And they said, why don't you speak about the church's mistreatment of homosexuality? In other words, what the church has gotten wrong, where we've lacked compassion, and then in the midst of that, do a very sensitive and gracious outreach. So no one could think that we're coming in there bashing and full of hate speech. Well, he had Christian sponsors behind the event. Some of the Christian sponsors have since backed out because of controversy. He sent me a picture today of flyers that are being handed out saying that I'm you know, leading a hate group and it's gonna be hate speech. And there are even quotes, I mean, in quotes, words that I allegedly said that I've never said that are words that critics have said about me and then they're putting quotes as if they're my own words. So you're talking about outright deceit and lying and there's uh, even talk, I mean, we're less than 24 hours out from the event and there's talk that it may be shut down at the university. Will we be able to go to a, a church building across the street and hold it there? So this is this is what tolerance looks like. This is what diversity looks like. This is what inclusivity looks like. In other words, my way or the highway, uh, exclusive of all other views that disagree with my perspective. That's what's happening now on these campuses. And you're talking, you know, basically rural North Carolina. You're not talking about a university in the, the heart of San Francisco or New York City or something like that. And yet there's this level of resistance. And of course, it's all based on spreading lies and misinformation. So we're excited about the event. The fact that there's resistance means that people are aware of it. And by God's grace, we're going to go in there. Uh, they, they have to have police protection and the whole bit. You know, that's required now. But by God's grace, we'll go in there. We'll smash the negative stereotypes. We'll present the truth and love of God side by side because the truth and the love of God do go side by side. Well, you mentioned the contrast between North Carolina and San Francisco. They have not had free speech in San Francisco in over three decades. I remember when I was a 19 year old street evangelist preaching alongside 
a black pastor who stood on a sidewalk in Seattle and he handed out gospel tracts. And he told me that when he did that same thing in San Francisco in the gay district, that they literally beat him to a pulp just for passing out gospel tracts mm. about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you're not at that stage in North Carolina. What do you expect the protesters in North Carolina to do on this college campus if the administration even lets you continue your speech? Well, I, I expect that they'll be there in front of the building, that they'll be handing out flyers, that maybe they'll have some megaphones and be speaking out against us. They'll try to stop people from coming in. My goal uh, would be to actually go out and speak with them and to invite them to come in and to tell them that they've actually heard lies about me and I and want to invite them to come in. We'd love to give them front row seats, you know, as many as we can. And, uh, and then tell them there's going to be a time for questions afterwards. So uh, I, we, we shall see what happens. You know, sometimes there's more talk than action, but because they actually have the flyers uh, printed up that they're distributing, because they're pressuring the university to try to shut things down, uh, I, I think there will be a decent sized protest. I don't expect any, any violence or anything like that, but my goal is to go talk to them and to invite them into the meeting and to say, hey, listen, it's, I, I'm hearing a lot of hate from your side. You're only going to hear love from my side. So let's, let's sit down and talk and see if we can build some bridges and see if we can help the Christians on campus build more bridges so that we can bring the, the life-changing truth of the gospel to each and every one of these people. Amen to that. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Dr. Brown for a quick answer about a book that he wrote, Can You Be Gay and a Christian at the Same Time? Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. How is your marriage doing? I want to tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage. But with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org you too can have a godly marriage. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. This book teaches 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional that will change your life and give you power. It comes with 15 inspiring true stories of political victory. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter 
free right now if you visit the website schoolofliberty.org. That's schoolofliberty.org. It's time to take back your country. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're joined again by a dear friend, Dr. Michael Brown, who is a national radio host and author of many books. Dr. Brown, what is the title of that book I mentioned? And can a person be gay and a Christian at the same time? Yeah, that's the title of the book, Can You Be Gay and Christian? And here's the simple answer. If by that question you mean, can a person struggle with same-sex attraction and say, Lord, I know this is wrong. I know you don't want me to be involved with someone of the same sex, but I, I struggle with temptation and desire, but I want to please you and serve you. Of course, they can follow Jesus and have certain struggles like every one of us does, be it with pride, be it with jealousy, be it with anger, be it with lust, be it whatever. Every one of us struggles in one area or another, and, and we all need God's grace. But if you mean by that, can you follow Jesus and practice homosexuality at the same time? The question is absolutely categorically no. The Bible is very clear on that, just like you cannot follow Jesus and practice adultery at the same time. The good news is Jesus shed the same blood for gay and straight alike, homosexual, heterosexual alike, and in him we can all be forgiven, redeemed, and transformed. Well, I am the greatest of sinners. I've been forgiven of all kinds of horrific sins, and uh, I'm sure you may confess the same, what is your testimony? How did you come to faith in Jesus Christ? You were not always a, a talk radio superstar. Uh, I came to Jesus in 1971 as a heroin shooting, LSD using hippie rock drummer that even stole money from my own father to my lasting shame. Uh, I am raised in a Jewish home. I barely believed in God. I had no interest in Jesus whatsoever. I went to a church to pull my two best friends out uh, a young lady who knew me from church wrote down in her diary, Antichrist comes to church. That's the reputation that I had. And God had mercy on a wretch like that. And he's had a lot of mercy in the 46 years since then. So we serve a merciful savior. Amen to that. You've also written another book, which has come out more recently, Saving a Sick America, a prescription for moral and cultural transformation. Do you think America is sick? America is very sick, and I think very few in America think that we're healthy. Uh, even people without any reference to God or religion, I think they know the many needs in, in our nation. Uh, we've never been a perfect nation, but we've got all kinds of problems now. I, I mean, if you fell asleep, and this is how I start the book, you fall asleep in 1962, you're watching Leave it to Beaver with your family, and you wake up and it's today. You know, so we've gone from Lassie to Game of Thrones, from Leave it to Beaver to Secret Diary of a Call Girl, and, and on and on it goes. So it's, it's extraordinary how things have changed in our culture, what's happened to marriage, what's happened to family morality. But the good news is I don't believe it's over for America. Saving a Sick America is a very serious book, but it is a book filled with hope. And Chaplain, I, I felt the Lord lay on my heart, write a book on the fall and rise of America, show how sick we are, how far we've fallen, but show how through repentance and revival and the Great Commission, America could yet experience wonderful days ahead, but it's only with divine intervention. The clock is ticking, the hour is urgent, but with divine intervention, we can actually see another great awakening come to our nation. So compare this so-called uh, so quest for a third great awakening to the American historical movements in the late 1700s and early 1800s of the first great awakening, the second great awakening, and what is the prescription for moral and cultural transformation? You know, if we go back to our roots, even though we've not been a perfect nation, we have based much of what we do on biblical principles. The founding fathers were strong on this. Times of great awakening were strong. So in saving a sick America, I look at all the major issues and problems in our society today, and for each one, I go back to the Word, go back to the Word, go back to the Word, and show that whether it's recovering a culture of life, whether it is restoring the family, whether it's dealing with debt or obesity, whatever it is, that the Scripture has the answer. So where does it start? It starts with us. 
God's people living by the word of God. If we will live by the word of God, then we can bring transformation to those around us by the example of the gospel and by the preaching of the gospel. So again, we're in an urgent situation. It's like you've been to the doctor and he says you've had a heart attack and you almost died. You're going to have to radically change your lifestyle, etc. But with radical change, you could be healthier than you've ever been. I believe that's the word to America today. Amen to that. So those two book titles, Can You Be Gay and Christian? Also, Saving a Sick America. I think those are both available at his website, askdrbrown.org. That's askdrbrown.org. But we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm really eager to hear about your diet book. You have lost uh, nearly 100 pounds, and the title is Breaking the Stronghold of Food, right after this. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage. But with the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon. And you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg it's time to take back your country. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Dr. Michael Brown. Dr. Brown, you have lost how much weight, and not just you, but your wife went on this crazy diet and you wrote a book about it. Yeah, it's, it's actually not a diet, it's a lifestyle change. You know, when we diet, we tend to cut back on certain foods and, you know, cut out a little of this, a little of that, 
or we do certain things with, with the hope of you know, radically losing some weight, but it's not sustainable long term. We are a culture of overindulgence. Our standard American diet is deadly. I was a chocoholic for most of my life. And, and I was 59 years old when God helped me change. So if I could change, anyone can change. My, my wife, Nancy, said she was a glutton for years and years. And God helped us break through. First, all glory to God by his grace. Secondly, we followed the, the guidelines of Dr. Joel Furman, who's written Eat to Live and End of Dieting. He's, he's very well known in these circles. So we went to a heavily plant-based diet. I'll have a little grilled meat once a week, but I eat massive salads, lots of fruits, uh, some healthy nuts and seeds in the course of the day. And I went literally less than eight months from 275 pounds to 180 pounds. My cholesterol went from a high of 230, the bad being high, the good being low, went to 123, the good being high, the bad being low. Uh, my blood pressure went from a high of 149 over 103 down to about 100 over 65. I used to have about three, four headaches every week. I haven't had a headache literally in over three and a half years. I used to have constant lower back pain. That's gone. I needed a breathing machine. Uh, even when I was in my low 200s, I needed a breathing machine. But when I got all the way down to this uh, weight, you know, with sleep apnea, the sleep apnea basically disappeared. So I don't need a breathing machine anymore. My energy level off the charts, my immune system probably 10 times stronger than it used to be. Of course, I, I exercised before, I exercise now, but the primary transformation, 90% of it was changing my relationship to food. So you talk about, I'm sure, eating more vegetables, that's one factor, exercising more. Everybody knows this, but you shared a personal story in one of your radio interviews about your struggle with M&Ms. And there was just, <laughs> there was a day when you could not put down the candy and, and God spoke to you. What, did, what happened at that moment? Yeah, so here's what happened. I, I'd been, you know, chocoholic for decades and peanut M&Ms, and I could eat those day and night. But every day, I'd have to have chocolate several times a day. And when, when I went cold turkey, August 24th of 2014, I went through three days of miserable withdrawal. It was harder for me to give up chocolate than to give up heroin in 1971. God is my witness. Prayed through, got free. Now it's about two and a half weeks later. I haven't had any chocolate. I know if I feel a need for sweets, I'm supposed to have fruit, you know, and that'll meet the fruit, the, 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 the healthy sugar need. Well, I was getting ready to teach a night class. I woke up from, teach, uh, from taking a nap after radio. I felt this for voracious desire to have something sweet. There was no fruit in the house. I thought, oh, I'll get some fruit juice, but then fruit juice has bad sugars in. I didn't know what to do. And I'm getting ready to teach a night class. And I thought, I can't, I can't, I can't do, I can't live like this any longer. And literally in the parking lot outside the class, I broke down in tears. God, I can't do this. The thought of never having sweets again and the whole bit, it seemed overwhelming. And right then, while, while crying, literally crying, I was watching myself from the outside, you know, I had that dual perspective and was laughing. As, and, and I knew this is good. I'm coming to the end of myself. Mike Brown can't do it. I'm too weak. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Wow. So out of that, I just knew grace carries me. And, and that, that was the one real battle. I've, 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 it's been easy. It has been really easy. And I travel around the world. I'm at airports constantly. I'm at hotels constantly. There's every day and night, literally, there's bad food around me. We make choices. We plan ahead. No exceptions for three and a half years. That's what makes it easy. You don't make exceptions. And I'm telling you, the grace that's in me, the vitality that's in me, the, the jealousy others have to be able to live the way I'm living. And our lives are in God's hands. He could, he could call us home tomorrow. But this much I know, to the extent that I'm called to be a steward of my body, gluttony is a sin. Uh, my stomach is not my God. I want to keep myself as healthy as I can so I can best glorify God and run my race. So I, I feel literally like the Lord saved my life. I feel literally like he's extended my life, and I am blessed beyond words at, at his grace. Nancy's life has been transformed as well. So in our book, Breaking the Stronghold of Food, we, we tell it like it is. We're candid. We're, you know, we have fun with it. It's inspiring. And then for all those that say, okay, but what about recipes? What about this? We have all kinds of links. You can get free online resources and other things and, and live this out. And the neat thing is we're hearing from people because the book came out a year ago. And now even more people are hearing about it a year later. 
We're hearing from people that said, I lost 80 pounds in, in a year. I've lost 60 pounds in six months. I've, I'm changed. I'm off my, my, my diabetes medication. And so we're, we're hearing story after story of miraculous transformation just when we, when we get in agreement with God and live by healthy principles. Well, I'm so proud of you for having done that. Um, you know, at, on this show, we like to discern the spirits. And I, I noticed at the top of your blog today at askdrbrown.org, you ask, does Jesus still want us as Christians to cast out demons? And I think a lot of things in my life are a spiritual issue, especially gluttony. And I'm asking you to pray for me, but would you lead our audience in a word of prayer against the spirit of addiction? Because that's the subtitle of your, your book, How We Conquered Food Addictions. And how do you get behind, it's not just nutrition or exercise, there's a spiritual component and Jesus can deliver us. Would you lead us in a word of prayer? Yeah, absolutely. Father, we understand the nature of addiction. We know that there are physical sides to it. We know there are emotional sides to it. We also recognize there are spiritual sides. So we ask you, Lord, everyone watching, listening to this broadcast that's addicted to food and struggling with other addictions, in your mercy, reach down and set them free. If the sun sets us free, we are free in Indeed, Lord, by your spirit, we proclaim liberty to the captives. We ask you to have mercy on us in our weakness. Demonstrate your power through us and give us practical steps to live addiction free in Jesus name. In Jesus name, amen. Okay, so we got just under a minute left. Mention all three book titles, tell people where they can buy them and if you have a phone number. Everything at our website, askdrbrown.org, ASK, drbrown.org. All the books, of course, are available at other online bookstores and things like that. Ask drbrown.org. We have thousands of hours of teaching, videos, resources, articles on all these relevant subjects. The books that we talked about on the air today, Can You Be Gay and Christian? Saving a Sick America, Breaking the Stronghold of Food. Connect with us, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You can do it all at askdrbrown.org. Our thanks to Dr. Brown for this generous interview and for his time. He's such a busy man. It's been hard to schedule, but I'm so grateful. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer today, call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.